Hey y'all! My name is Brianna. Welcome to my vlog slash Bible study slash randomness slash I don't really know what else. This is the first one. So first up, the weekly vlog. So I got a guitar yesterday. I can barely play like two chords, but we're working on it. We're working on it. YMCA, that rhymed, and I'm going to take a summer circus class that my mom is training called Duo Cradle. Pretty excited. Why did you stop? Do, 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 do. Okay, let's go. <laughs> hey Jillian, how was the beach? Oh, it was so much fun. <laughs> I swallowed so much water. It tastes great. My God. I almost got hit by a surfer. Yeah, that was funny. Mary's um, boogie board broke. Oh yeah, that was pretty funny. Mary, say hello. Thanks for get, thanks for making me look like this now. Like you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> and that was my week. Now it's time for. So I was reading Matthew the other day, and I found a passage that I really like and is kind of scary. Here's the first part. Therefore, stay awake, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. But know this, that if the master of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake, and would not have let his house be broken into. Therefore, you also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. So in our passage, Jesus is speaking to his disciples. He says all this because they ask him two questions. One, when's the temple going to be destroyed? And two, how will we know when the end times are coming? And he basically answers them, you're not going to know when this stuff is going to happen, but here are some clues and this is what will happen. Eventually he comes to the part that we read, which is titled, No One Knows That Day and Hour. Jesus compares the end times with a thief breaking into a house. Do we know when a thief is going to try to break into our houses? No. Do we know when the end times are going to happen? No. Do we know when we're going to die? No. But Jesus says we have to be prepared. Well, we know how to prepare our houses for when a thief tries to break in. We lock our doors and we may put in a security system. But how do we prepare for Jesus' return? Let's flip on over to see what Paul has to say about this in 1 Thessalonians 5 verses 4 to 6. But you are not in darkness, brothers, for that day to surprise you like a thief. For you are all children of light, children of the day. We are not of the night or of the darkness. So then let us not sleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. What Paul is saying is that children of light, or those who have been saved Christians, should understand that Jesus is going to return. So we shouldn't be surprised or unprepared when he does come. How do we be prepared? Paul says to stay awake and be sober. Sober? Yes, the word here literally means not intoxicated. But it doesn't just mean by alcohol. It means to stay sober from the pleasures of this world. Okay, so not just Christians understand that they're going to die someday. Like, everyone knows they're going to die. 
However, our culture takes this understanding in a different direction than the Bible does. Our culture says because we have such a short time on earth, let's enjoy everything it has to offer. Let's party and drink and get rich and do dumb things. I mean, I only have one chance at this, right? YOLO! We might not get tomorrow, let's do it tonight! Mm, 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 mm. I'm sorry, those are old references, I know. As Christians, our one desire should be God. If we put the pleasures of this world in front of him, we have made that thing our God instead of God. Personally, when I have put the pleasures of this world in front of God, I've been satisfied, but only in that moment. I've only been truly satisfied and fulfilled with my relationship with God. When we put God first, we realize that our salvation is the most important thing to have. Why? Because when we leave earth, we know where we're going. We've locked in our salvation. Get it? Because we lock the doors on the thief? Ha! <laughs> yeah, okay. Also, one of the reasons for presenting the doctrine of the imminent return of Christ is that it is an impelling motive to be living for him every day. There is no better reason for working for Christ apart from real love for him than the motive that we may see him today. If we realize the solemnity of the event for us and for those who will be left behind, how earnestly it should make us watch and be sober, how we should be diligent in our Christian life and profession because of the imminent coming of Christ. Thanks, Bible.org. Okay, one more thing to read, I promise. It's the second part of our passage. Who then is the faithful and wise servant whom his master has set over his household to give them their food at the proper time? Blessed is that servant whom his master will find so doing when he comes. Truly, I say to you, he will set him over all his possessions. But if that wicked servant says to himself, My master is delayed, and begins to beat his fellow servants, and eats and drinks with drunkards, the master of that servant will come on a day when he does not expect him, and at an hour he does not know, and will cut him in pieces and put him with the hypocrites. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The good servant is like someone who is ready for the return of Christ, the master of the house. The wicked servant is someone who is not ready, and they will be thrown into the place where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. Hell. But this is the scary part! The servant didn't start out wicked. He thought that because his master was delayed, or the end times haven't come yet, or he was young and he thought he had his whole life in front of him, he gave himself over to the pleasures of this world. My friend, do not give yourself over to the pleasures of this world. There are always strings attached and they will always fail you. Do not wait to give yourself to God. He will never fail you. And that's it. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did like it, please subscribe and I'll make some more videos like this. Bye. It's real hot in here. I'm turning on a fan. flashing on my camera and I don't know what that means but it's kind of scary. Oh, I messed it up. <laughs> you can see the rings in my eyes.